People have so many questions about their spiritual growth. How am I doing? What should I be doing? Is it happening as it should? Is it happening at all? There is a seat, a position within yourself, which if you find it, you will never have another problem of that sort throughout your entire path. People feel that in the name of spirituality, they will surrender money, relationships, careers, hopes and dreams, so that they can turn toward the deeper things in life and experience the greatness of spirit. But what they've done is they've surrendered what they used to cling to, what used to disturb them, what used to keep them neurotic, so that now their spirituality can keep them neurotic. The proper seat is to surrender that too. It eventually happens that you realize it is happening by itself. You're going through what you must go through, or you would not be going through it. It's just by definition. If you're having trouble with, say, jealousy, you can't sit there and say, oh, if only I had done better, I would not be having this problem. The fact that it is there is why you're having the problem, and therefore the problem is really a solution. It wouldn't be there if you didn't need it, and you wouldn't be having trouble if you weren't having trouble. It doesn't mean you have to keep having trouble. It merely means that right now, that is what's happening, because it's what you must go through. So what do you do about it? You do nothing. You permit it to be. Inside, you do your best with you. You hang out with you. That's the seat. You stay with you. You take deep breaths. You let go. In this seat, nothing can disturb you. You now have found the seat of the yogi. Whatever must take place will. You are not interfering with it. There is no question, am I growing fast enough? You are not interfering with the entire process. Whatever needs to take place does. There are times for turmoil and there are times for peace. There are times for disturbed emotions and there are times for love and beauty. Both are like sandpaper, just what they need to be in order to open you when you need to be opened, in order to challenge you when you need to be challenged, period. That's the process. The problem is that that's not what we do. We don't sit in the seat of the self and permit the process to take place. We formulate opinions and views and concepts about what is supposed to be happening especially inside of ourselves and in our spiritual pursuits. And then we judge everything based on this. Believe it or not, that is the greatest misjustice that you can do to your spiritual evolution. And it is only because you're doing that that you come up with questions such as, am I growing? Am I doing well enough? Is what's supposed to be happening happening? Is everything right? Is because... You're trying to make it be something. You haven't let go enough yet. So the seat is to somehow really deeply come to understand that what is must be inside and out. And you permit the changes inside to take place that must. You needn't judge them. You needn't harness them. You needn't balance them or control them. You needn't do a thing. And anything that you do do, I assure you, interferes with the process. In fact, I will go one step further. Anything that you find yourself doing, you're doing in order to stop the process. 
It's because you're afraid of what's happening. It's too strong. It's too powerful. It's too fast. It's too challenging. It's too confusing. Whatever. And therefore, in an attempt to make it nice and neat and understandable and digestible, we want to bite it off into little pieces at just the right time, hold them in just the right way, and in essence, control our growth. When you do that, you will definitely feel, how am I doing? You have to ask that question, because you're doing. Because you're doing it, you better ask the question, how am I doing? What I'm showing you is if you're not doing it, there are no questions. The process is taking place, and you're not interfering with it. And the only thing that would cause you to interfere with it is that you're afraid, is that you're not willing to let go enough. In order to let go, the yogis have come to see it's very difficult to just sit within yourself while all this is going on and let it happen. You have to find something to occupy yourself other than the process. You really should not be involved in the process because it's not your process. It's the process that's trying to purify you. It has none of your business, if you will. I know people don't like to hear that. But it's just between God and your being. And the part of you that's in between is going through cleansing. You let it be. So how? The simplest way is to stay busy. You stay busy. How? It doesn't matter, but the highest busy is that which is given to you versus that which you choose. You shouldn't be thinking, what should I do? I believe deep inside, sincerely, that each person has a work to do and that it will be presented to the person if they're not busy resisting it, if they're not busy distorting and saying, I'd rather be doing this, I don't want to do that, this is boring, I don't feel like doing this today, I don't like this anymore, why should I have to do that? He does that, and why can't I do that? Etc., etc., etc. In other words, your stuff that's supposed to be purifying instead is again interfering with the process because part of the process is your outer life. It will give you work to do. It will keep you occupied. Not that the work itself has meaning, but the occupied has meaning. I can guarantee you that it will get very hot inside at different points of your journey and that you will not be able to just sit there unless you have a way, a process, whereby your consciousness can remain committed and occupied to something outside yourself. And therefore, there is karma yoga. And karma yoga is a very, very great thing. Very great. It's the true base of the spiritual path. You give me the Bhagavad Gita. And I will tell you, that's a treatise on karma yoga. By the performance of his simple tasks, let a man rise to the highest state. It is in the daily functioning that your growth takes place. It's not off somewheres in mystic, mystic land. You have to purify. You have to cleanse. In order to do so, you must stay occupied so that you detach yourself enough from the fires within in order to not interfere with the process. Therefore is work. Therefore is your dharma. Therefore is given to you a reason to awake in the morning, a reason to get out of bed, a reason to dress, a reason to bathe, a reason to go and to do your work a reason to take the energies within you and be productive and committed to what is put before you. If you're really committed to things, not because of what you will get from that, not because of how much money you make, not because other people will say, oh, you've done so well, I'm so happy, aren't I proud of you. You're doing it because it was given for you to do. It is your task. It is your dharma. While you do that task, you will grow. 
I don't want to say you will grow because of the task. I want to say you will grow because the task is the part of the process that keeps you occupied while the magic takes place within. If you show me someone who's living a life of committed work and discipline, this person over time will always tell you, I don't know, I used to have a problem with such and such, and it's just not there anymore. I used to feel those feelings, and I don't know, I I don't know where it went or when. I can't put my finger on it. I just know that it doesn't bother me anymore. It's not like that anymore. It's kind of different inside. That's a karma yogi. You're not responsible. You're not doing it. Nobody said you were supposed to. All that you're doing is what was told for you to do. Here, sweep this floor. And so you sweep the floor. You sweep the floor because it's better than sitting inside your mess. You hear me? How often I have people say, I wish there was more time off or I could go on more vacations or, you know, we should have three months off a year or something like this. Why? So you could sit inside yourself and get all messed up? do so you could run around and try to see how much of your stuff you can express more time to get things the way you want you see more time to make it happen but it's absurd there's only one process that's happening and that's inside of you and let me clue you in you don't want to be in there when it's taking place you want to be a nice safe distance where you go about your business you know what you're supposed to do because it gets very confusing it gets very distorted in there, doesn't it? You don't want to have to be making decisions and doing all kinds of things when that's going on. All right? Better that you should be able to get up, do your task to the best of your ability. And I want your task to be demanding of you. I don't want it to be a task where you can space out. I want it to be a task that if you don't put your being into it, it shows up. Not that the result matters. But I want it to show up so that you're forced to put your being into it. Every one of you have seen the results of karma yoga at some point in your life. You take somebody who perhaps is going through a relationship breakup. Now you tell me, which would you rather have? That you are a career person? You are expected to be at a very challenging and demanding job at 8 o'clock every morning? And the job keeps you busy till six or so, maybe five, six days a week. And while you're going through these emotional problems and different traumas that go on inside, you have to go there. You have no choice. You have to drag yourself out of bed. You can't lie there and feel sorry for yourself. You can't lie there and drift off and think about how it could have been or why did you do this or what is he doing now or... What should you do or anything? You have to do your work. Your work is in front of you. You you must do this. You must write this. You must read this. You must drive here. Whatever it is, you must do it. It's demanded. People are expecting. There are people coming, knocking on the door. There it is. You have to deal with it. You must deal with it. Not that there be one second for yourself. Not one tiny second. The work is more important than you. Oh, people have trouble with that. They don't understand that. They sit there and say, well, how can the work be more important than me when you said that the whole purpose of the earth and everything on it is for my evolution? Then how can the work possibly be more important? How can the work be more important when it's all going to turn into ashes someday? It's nothing, it will fade, everything fades, and I'm an eternal soul. Surely I'm more important than the work. How can the work be more important when anything that comes from it Fame, glory, money, success. It just fades in the night. They're not even worth having. So how can the work be more important than me? The work is more important than you because you're on this earth to grow. Because it demands of you. It works inside and out. And if you will commit yourself to the work, more important than you. I don't feel like getting up. You Get up. Anyways, I don't feel like doing this today. You do it. Why? Because the work is more important than you. 
Which you? That you? The one I'm talking about? The one who don't feel like getting up? You hear me? That's the one that's being cleansed. Of course she doesn't feel like getting up. It can get very intense in there. You don't want to be in there. And you don't have to. That's the greatest blessing. Nobody told you you have to sit there and make everything come up. Just stop holding it down. You are the one who's interfering with the process. You are not causing the process. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to know where it came from. You don't have to know what your mother or father said to you that made you feel that way. You just have to let go of the feeling. Then it's over. Then no one made you feel that way. It's gone. It doesn't matter why. The only reason that psychoanalysis works in terms of the why is because maybe if you understand how it got there, you'll be willing to let it go. But if you understood how it got there and you still didn't let it go, you wasted your money. <laughs> but if somebody goes, you see why that's there? It's not really you. Your mother said that to you and that's why that happened. Oh my God, of course, in all these years I've been running around thinking this is me. So I can just let it go because it was just my mother doing that to me. That's right. Oh, I feel so wonderful in the wonderful process. Yes, you let it go. What difference does it make why you let it go? Let it go and it will not stop you anymore. But the process, the Shakti, once the spirit awakes, will always be pushing this stuff up. All you have to do is get out of the way. And I'm telling you there's only one way you're going to do it. And that's to stay occupied. You stay busy. Each moment of each day, you should know where you're expected to be and be there. You get up in the morning for meditation, you be there. It's the first day. It's not important that you be there. It doesn't seem so important. So be there anyway. Then the second day, well, what the heck? I did it the first. Might as well do it the second. You do it the second, then the third, then the fourth, then one year, two years, three years every day and you wouldn't even think of not doing it when you feel good you go when you feel bad you go when you don't even know what you feel you go when you don't know why you're going you go doesn't matter in other words it's more important than you you went through all these little cycles all these little stages and yet it was constant you hear me it's the consistent thread that will carry you across your cycles. It's the constant. That is how you live your life. Once you have set a commitment into motion like that, it does become more important than your ego. Never, ever let your ego step in and start mouthing off. Oh, I don't need to do this anymore. I've done this long enough. What's the difference? You know, it's four days versus five. I'll take one day off. The minute, the second that you let it have one inch, you lost. It's like if you're on a diet and you say, well, listen, it's not going to kill me. I have this one little thing. Didn't you see how powerful what happened once you had that one little thing? Nobody ever had one little thing. <laughs> Why? Why? There's a, there's a real science here. Why? Because while you hadn't had the one thing, you were putting the diet in front of yourself. You were putting the commitment in front of anything that your mind could say. It didn't matter what it thought up. Well, I'm probably a little low on, on some energy. I need some sugar, so it's good. This is a different reason. It's medicinal. It wouldn't matter what your mind said. It didn't matter what you said. The answer was no. Now I'm going to clue you in. The moment there's one exception, and I mean one tiny, tiny, tiny exception, you blew it. Because now it's not more important than you anymore. You, at least a part of you, were more important than it, than that commitment. And the minute you do that, you will slip, won't you? You'll slip. Oh, you may come back up next time, but you're going to slip, period. You put things in front of yourself because by putting them in front of yourself, they become your tool to growth. So you must believe and understand that these things are more important than you. And if meditation time becomes more important than you, and then work time becomes more important than you, I pray and I hope that you will start to feel 
I want this is what I want to. My favorite thing is for ego to say is when it starts saying, but where's my time? Well, what time is for me? But isn't this my life? When will I get to live my life? I'm meditating and I'm working and I'm sleeping and when will I get to live my life? I wanted to say that. What does it mean by that? It means something's missing and you're not letting me go out and find it. I mean, I used to be good and neurotic about this and I got to try all different kinds of things. They never worked, but I got to try them and it was very promising. Now I'm just doing the same thing all the time. It's just the same thing. How am I ever going to be happy? Because you already know the answer. You're going to be happy when it stops thinking that there's something to get outside of itself and it hasn't found it yet. And so it needs time to go out and find it. There is nothing to find. The problem is that. The problem is you. And so you just take a deep breath and you go back to your work. A wise being understands that work is your best friend. And you put that, whether it's meditation work, whether it's business work, whatever it is, you put that in front of yourself. Now, people do see that. It's not so weird if you have a child. I think most of you tend to put that child in front of yourself. You know, like the kids at school, it's time to pick them up. I think you probably usually do. Probably you do that more consistently than you keep your meditation. You don't tend to just sit there and say, ah, I don't feel like it today. Kid will be all right. <laughs> you see, you wouldn't even think of it. It wouldn't even cross your mind. But with the meditation time in the morning or with the work or something like that, you would not think twice. In fact, you're looking for reasons not to do it. What you're saying, is this a good enough excuse? Usually not for this one. Eh? But you're not doing that with the kid. Why? Because you put the kid in front of yourself. You know you do. And you do to such an extent that nobody even argues with you inside. Your mind doesn't argue the whole time you're going to pick up the kid. I really shouldn't have. This is ridiculous. Why do I have to do this? You know, you just... That's all I can say, is you know that that's more important than you. You know that your dharma, you know that your responsibility, you know that that's what you're to be doing at this moment. If you will do that with your work, if you will do that with getting up, if you will do that with your meditation, if you will do that with everything, the joy that you get from serving a child and bringing a child up, you will get from every single moment of your life. And nothing inside of you will any longer be saying, When can I be happy? Why can't I do this? You'll be happy in everything you're doing. Commit yourself to what's in front of you as if you were doing it for God, because you are. Because that's what it gave you to do. No task is trivial. None. If you wash your body, my God, it's not your body. You didn't make it, did you? You don't know how to keep it together. You don't know anything. It was a gift that was given to you. Wash it as though you were washing something God made. Because he did. And all of a sudden, the act of washing is spiritual. The act of getting up and going to meditation is much more spiritual than meditating. You're going to find that someday. The commitment inside of you that drives you to do it every day will take you to God more certainly than the meditation itself. Period. And no one would argue that. Because you're letting go of yourself. It doesn't matter what happens in meditation. That which takes you to work each day and commits you to do your best at it will take you and give you much greater joy than anything your work ever gives back to you. Don't ask for anything back. There's nothing to get back. The act of doing right for the sake of right is the greatest gift that you could ever have. And that's what the Gita is all about, is how to live each moment of your life in a way that optimizes your spiritual evolution. Eventually, God will take all your time. All of it. And you'll know God did. You will know that at no time Do you even have time to think, what do I want to do? Imagine how many times a day you think, what do I want to do? Or a night, or a weekend, or so on. Certainly during the weekends you think it much more than you do during the week. What do I want to do? Certainly at night you think a heck of a lot more than during the day. During the day you know what you have to do. There's no question, what do I want to do? If you're working. That's a gift. Okay. 
you will find that God takes your time and you know where to be and you know what to do and there is no time left for your little self. That is when you are in tune with God and He will keep you completely occupied outside so that the magic work can be happening inside day and night and you do that by being willing to live the committed life that is given for you to do. Put your whole being into everything that's in front of you. Hold nothing back. Go through whatever you must go through and do what is put before you. That is when you're living a full life. And you will grow tremendously. It will step up at paces you would have never dreamt of. That's all. And don't ever look back. Don't ever think, all right, I'll do this, but we'll try it for a month. What you're basically saying is, I'll let go, but come back. Then you didn't let go. Just don't even think that you have the right to think that I might ever stop. Don't ever think that it's your responsibility to think that I might want to change. Just keep moving forward with what's being given to you. And you will see that each thing will unfold in its own time, on its own basis, and then you commit yourself to that, and then to that, and then to that. And pretty soon, not only do you have no time, but you realize that everything before you, behind you, above you, below you, was given to you from God. It was just, life did it. There's no more you around here. It's all just the reflection of what life did. And you're free. You're free. All you're going to do is do what's put before you. You're free to put your whole heart into it, to do the best at whatever you're doing without thought of reward or failure or anything. Now you're growing. That's the seat I was talking about. That's the seat of a great one. You let go. Let the process take place. It's none of your business. What should you be doing? What was given for you to do? And it sure as heck wasn't to grow spiritually because you wouldn't even know where to start. What if I walked in and said, okay, grow spiritually. What? What'd you say? Okay, know God. What? What What kind of an absurd statement is that? Where do you start? But if someone walks up to you and says, here, nail this together. Hey, I know how to do that. Okay, I'll do that. Good. You do that. And I assure you, God will do the rest at a level you would never dream of. So don't look back. Don't stop. Just bury your being into what life has given you to do. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about relationships. Don't worry about age. Don't worry about anything. Just be willing to put your whole being into what was given for you to do. And you're going to grow tremendously. Mm, Jack, we're down.